Hello everyone, welcome to the video series on UFT automation. In this video, we will look at object identification. And let me show you where that is on the, on the UFT screen. Uh, under tools, uh, the third one is object identification. So, this is the process in which UFT identifies the objects. When I say objects, I'm referring to those that you see on your application. You know, it could be your Windows application or it could be your web application. So what are the things that you see on these applications? You see text, you see radio buttons, you see check boxes, you see drop downs, you, see, you might see tables, buttons, you know, anything pretty much anything and everything that you see there they're all objects including the images so how does qtp identify those objects okay that's what is object identification say for example you see a car what is that telling you that what you see you know the object that you see what is it telling you that that's a car what is it they're telling you? Because you already have the knowledge. You already have the definition of an object that looks like a car or uh, you have some sort of description in your memory or you know with you that tells you that this is how a car should be or should look like. So that tells you or that helps you to identify the object. Say, for example, uh, you know, a laptop. You know, you have a laptop and you have a tablet and you have a, a regular desktop sitting, you know, next to you. Even though you have three different objects, you can distinctly identify a tablet from a laptop. You can, you know, you can easily say that. And why is that? same thing uh, you know how a, a traditional desktop looks like so you know these properties you know how a, lap, a laptop looks like and you know how what a tablet is so you so you have some sort of description or some sort of properties that kind of you know uh, help you identify those objects so the same way uh, uft uses certain descriptions slash properties so you have to use some sort of properties to identify an object um, so those properties are nothing but mandatory properties and assistive properties now when we have uh, mandatory properties then why do we need assistive properties Say, for example, you know, sometimes it might be difficult to uniquely identify a car. You know, that could be a situation. Say, for example, you have two cars, same color, and, um, you know, same make and model, same color. They look exactly the same, you know, neatly washed and everything. Now, how would you identify the car? Make is same, model is same, color is same, height is same, width is same, everything is same. So the license plate could be different. Probably with that, you know, will most likely identify, you know, which car it is that belongs to which person, say, for example. So sometimes, you know, you, you might need more than certain properties to identify the object uniquely within the objects that you see. So, you know, same is with um, the web application. Say, for example, 
uh, all these objects you know within you know Windows application or uh, web application the programmers give some names to these objects if these names are not unique or rather I would say you know they're not uh, good enough to identify it then it will go into assistive properties now you do have an option uh, to add properties uh, and you know have the uh, UFT use those additional properties to identify the object so let, let it, I guess uh, I've given enough theory on that let's go dig into this so on the object identification screen you have a drop down called environment so depending on uh, the type of application you know you will see how UFT identifies these objects say for example since we have worked with a standard windows for quite a long time let me go ahead and pick that so here what it does is say for example dialog box you know the our login is a dialog box for sample application so it uses these four properties to uniquely identify the object and we have seen the text is unique in most cases so you know it will use it let us go to uh, static which is a text field and uh, look here I mean the text field could most likely be blank in most cases because as a user of the application we key in the text so we get the text that's a different story but uh, that's an assistive property but you know it's a native class you know depending on the class of the object and then window ID it identifies the object and now when I say class say for example this you know win button is a class you look at your text uh, sorry test object classes so all that these are the class of dialogues class of static object class of win button so all certain you know these buttons are classified and you know these are referred to as classes and uh, this class you know let me give you a good example a practical real-time example let me say car car is a specific uh, a class of vehicle and a car looks a certain way it has certain properties like you know it has four wheels if if it has three wheels they don't call it a car it, it has four it is supposed to have four wheels and it's supposed to have a steering but if you take um, a vehicle say um, uh, the you know let's say um, a bus the class is bus you know that means you know you expect bus to be of certain size and certain type you know number of wheels and capacity of people getting into this into the vehicle and all that so that kind of describes you know if, if you construct a vehicle kind of looks like that acts like that then it falls under that class same way all the buttons they're all, all belong to button class it's a win button class yeah, under uh, standard windows properties say for example edit is win edit class that's a class of uh, you know if you have an object of that class that means it is something that you can edit and in the UFT identifies it using these type of properties again these properties you don't have to uh, really get uh, stressed on this fact you know what are these properties and all that it's kind of simple actually say for example again let's go back to our car example what are the properties of car uh, number one color make and model license number and uh, yeah, does it have uh, a stereo does it have uh, five speakers does it use a diesel or a petrol um, what kind of tires uh, it has you know make and model of tire so these are all the properties and who is the owner of the car it's also a property of the car so these are all the uh, properties and pro the owner the property which is called uh, owner of the car might not describe the car but that kind of helps you know more about the car meaning hey you know who owns the car so there are nothing but you know properties of what car same way you take an object on an application web or uh, Windows yeah, it could be anything take a button so button is a class and you know button you can only click on it but you cannot enter anything into the button so that's how this works you know it, it is a button where you can click it could be disabled or it could be enabled 
again that again depends on enable disable flag on most of these objects most of the objects have enable disable flag sometimes you might see a text box but you'll not be able to enter anything if it is disabled so those are the properties that let UFT identify the objects so and when it comes to properties you know you, uh, you know it's a pretty standard you know EFT uses uh, mandatory properties and assistive properties and uh, let's go switch to um, .NET web forms uh, it has few and uh, this is a grid it uses HTML ID to identify the you know grid and if you go to a web and this is a pretty standard web based application a uh, web element you might have seen this when we use mercury tools to record so it uses HTML tag you know, HTML tag for all this most of the web uh, elements have HTML tag uh, within the code and if you look at a web page and click right click and go to properties you will see the tag so it uses those to identify those objects so again this is the uh, this is how UFT identifies the objects using these properties so when it you know, looks at a uh, looks at a uh, object it'll, it'll try to find it will try to determine to which class it belongs to and then it goes and you know finds all these properties that it should uh, find or grab you know, identify in order to uniquely identify the object on that screen so that's the you know whole point about this object uh, identification okay okay uh, we'll, we'll visit this uh, you know object identification screen back in the next uh, you know few videos uh, that are revolving pretty much around object identification and object repository okay okay uh, that's a quick introduction into object repository and there is something called enable smart identification we will look at that in a, a separate video by itself okay well then uh, I will uh, see you in the next video Thank you.